Um, we would like uh, to bring up now Assembly Member Jose Rivera from the Bronx. Good morning, buenas tardes, buenos días. Listen, I want to begin by first, I walk throughout our state, our city, and even to Cuba wearing this hat because I am proud member of the Bronx family. But I want to begin by taking this hat off and waving it to all of you for you being here this very important day at this very important moment. My hat is taken up for you. Listen, it was some maybe 20, 25 years ago, some of you were not born yet. But Brother Bill Perkin was already born and he and I served in the New York City Council together. I recall some 30 years ago, I lost some friends of mine. And when we went to the funeral home, I could see him or her because the casket was closed. It was New York City and America was kept secret. We began to ask after hearing so many similar people dying that there's something wrong in our city and we need to look into it. And it was not when I and Bill Perkins were member of the city council and we were member of the health committee. Listen to some of you who used to be all over New York City actors. There was an organization by the name of ACTA. Yeah. And they came to us. We had a health committee meeting. They walked in, they stormed they, they didn't just walk in in those days. You know what I mean? They stormed That's right. That's right. And when they brought it to our attention that there is something wrong happening to only one people of, not only people that don't look like me, not only to people that don't look like you, but something was happening, affecting people that look like all of us. People were dying, and they brought it to our attention. Enoch Williams was the chairman of the Health Committee. Yes, sir. And ACT UP said, we need help because people are dying, and we need city government to stand up and support the request that we make. Yeah. Now, that was a long time ago. Here I am, I look a little different, heavier, less hair, so let me put back my hat. Brother Perkins looks a little different, but he's still slim, he can outrun me. And he does a great job in the Senate, like the other elected official senator that were here. You're up here at a very important moment. A discussion that's taking place behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. They need to hear you loud and clear. We need to be with you as we speak to our other colleagues within the Black and Puerto Rican Legislative Caucus or the Puerto Rican Hispanic Task Force. We got to bring your message. And I'm going to take it a step further. My dear friend, Governor Andrew Cuomo, all right, all right now. At the end of the day, all, right now. all my constituents, That's right. all my actors, right. all those who vote for me because they believe in me, right. and I'm going to include those who don't vote for me because they don't believe with me, for me. All right. That's all right. okay. You're all included. That on this budget, all that the community is asking, that I look around from vocal New York to Argus and, and uh, uh, Hudson Works. These are organizations that provide, they're, they're the one, they're the soldiers. They're the ones on the ground. They're the ones that pay, daily face our families. I'm saying, Andrew Cuomo, all they're asking is only $70 million. 
By the way, by the way, your father, Mario Cuomo in the 80s, did a lot with a 40 or 50 million dollar budget. You cannot tell me that as we begin to talk behind closed doors, that you cannot find 70 million dollars in a 160 billion dollar budget. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So we need 70 plus. We need 70 plus. I don't think you're asking for too much. We need not to be, when we come back here the next time, it is to celebrate and say thank you. It's not to demand what is entitled to us. And AIDS affects everyone in our community. It affects all of us. We don't know who is going to be affected next. You can be, you can be transgender. It affects you. Right. You can be Go gay. It affects you. You can be lesbian. It affects you. It affects everyone. So we need to have 70 million, yeah. million dollars in the budget now. If not, we're going to shut your office. We're going to shut all of you down. And we're going to get Somebody remembers that Bill Perkins and I, Brother Perkins and I, we were arrested for the right cause, That's and right. we stand ready to be arrested right. for this cause. That's Thank right. you. All right. All right. Yeah. We were innocent, though. <laughs> the government like was you. guilty. Just like you. And uh, but I'll, I'll get arrested again and again and again. That you're no longer going to have to be here. And I would like to suggest Senator, that um, you, the next time, before you leave here, uh, and every time you come here, that you pay a visit to the governor's office. I don't care who the governor is. I don't care whether it's a Democrat or Republican or whatever other party, God forbid, you may take over that office. But, um, you need to make sure that those at the highest levels of government hear from you. Unfortunately, we are the low-hanging fruit. We always hear many of us, like my family, sit with you because we suffer as a family what you suffer as individuals. My family was there with you. Unfortunately, uh, they're not here now, those that were there, as you may know. But nevertheless, we're always going to be here until this struggle is won. And we appreciate your advocacy. We appreciate your presence. We hope that you never get shy to share what you have to share to those of us, no matter how low or high we may be on the political totem pole. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. Uh, so we, if you're there, we're there. If you're here, we're here. So if we're going all the way to the top. 
Let us know so we can be at that door, with, whether it's the governor's door All or right. the governor's door, All right. to make sure that your voice is heard. All right. Now, again, the easiest thing is to get up here by bus and to have these rallies. And I'm not dismissing the value of it, but the most important thing is that you've got to make folks that are representing you locally accountable. And if they're not here, then they need to be somewhere where you are so that they can show you that they are with you in fighting this fight. Because you are just a small drop of the so many more that are not here today. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. And even though we're proud of the numbers that are here, and it makes a big difference, there are many, many more that could not be here for one good reason or another. And so we'll never have your ear. You're representing them as we are representing you and our constituents that come from our district. And so we know that army that's out there uh, needs as much as support from us and from you and from everybody else as possible. So we want to thank you for your continued advocacy. When you get uh, into the neighborhood, don't hesitate to come to our district office. I'm the right there on 25th Street. For those of you that are in the neighborhood, you don't have to live in the district to stop by. If you do live in the district, by all means, mi casa es su casa. Yeah. And so, but, uh, but it's very, very important. You know, there's, there's so many who were last year who are not here this year for one unfortunate reason or another. So on behalf of that legion of others who we've lost in this struggle before we have come to the conclusion uh, we have to make sure that we don't give up this fight. Not only for those from the past, but we got to make sure that no one, no one else follows us. That this is the end of this fight, that this is the end of this crisis yeah. in our families and our communities. Yeah. And so thank you again for your, your bravery, thank you for your leadership, and keep up, keep the faith. Yeah.